What's up guys, this is DuckSpeed and I'm here to show you the Marvel Champions Complete Edition on Tabletop Simulator. For those of you that don't know what Tabletop Simulator is, it's a game on Steam which allows you to play tabletop games created mostly by the community. And um, it is a game that you must pay for, it goes on sale every once in a while, but I'm going to assume that you already own Tabletop Simulator and you're just looking to understand how to get the Complete Edition and you'd like a little bit of a tour and how to use it, right? So we won't go over basic functions of Tabletop Simulator, how to flip cards, rotate, etc. There are videos that show that and there's a tutorial on Tabletop Simulator as well. Uh, we're gonna focus on the complete edition to try and keep this video as short as possible. Before we dive in and look at how to get the mod or the workshop rather, let's read this quick disclosure. And that's, this workshop is intended for players who own the Marvel Champions LCG content. It may be used to test builds with other players, record and stream your gameplay. Please, all I ask is that you support Fantasy Flight Games or Asmodee by purchasing this amazing product at a valid retailer. That might be your local game store, uh, your favorite online store, or Asmodee Direct. Whichever way possible, look, let's support those guys and, and make sure credit's given where credit is due. All right. So let's kick things off looking at how to get the complete edition. So you're in Tabletop Simulator on Steam. Uh, rather, you're on Steam under Tabletop Simulator. You click on Workshops, and you're going to look at the search bar under Workshops and type in Marvel Champions Complete Edition. It's going to load this page here. I'll also leave this link in the description below so you can pull that up and maybe that's easier for you. Once you've gotten to this page, all you need to do now is hit subscribe. Subscribing is greatly appreciated, so thank you to everybody who subscribed to date. Uh, but what subscribing really does is it gives you automatic updates so you don't have to worry about downloading anything additional. So it's a one click and you're done. For instance, I recently added Ant-Man. Ant-Man will be live when you've subscribed. So as soon as I load Ant-Man and you load up Tabletop Simulator, you too will have Ant-Man. That, that's how it works. So once you've subscribed, pretty simple, let's move to Tabletop Simulator. You load a game and under Workshops you're going to see that picture I showed you that says Complete Edition. Click that and this is what we'll load. Cool. So you have two areas. I'll show you where things are at first. Let's look at the layout. And then we'll look at a couple nitty gritty um, best practices and, and functionality specific to this workshop. So the bottom table is going to be your player area, right? And the upper area is going to be kind of like a setup storage area. I don't know how, what to call it per se. Um, yeah, <clears throat> this room, this background, it may change in the future, but for now, this is what we're using. So first thing I would look at is this notepad. If there's, an, if there's one thing you look at, let it be this, because it's going to tell you an overview of the table. Okay. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and take a seat. Oh, we already have. Change our color. We're teal. Cool. Our upper area, upper table. So you have your different aspects. You have basic, aggression, justice, protection, and leadership. This will have all of your cards located in there, so we'll left click and drag those cards out. It has all the different cards that you can search for. Then you have your heroes and hero counters. If you're curious, yes, these are custom counters made specifically for this workshop by me. Um, you will not find these in real life, so this is, again, custom to the workshop. And then you have villain counters on the right side that will be used for the villains. Each hero is going to have a hero bag next to them. Each bag is going to have the identity card, the hero cards, a starter deck, the obligation, and the nemesis set. So if you wanted to manually set up a hero and build you know, your deck here, you could definitely do that. You also have your learn to play and rules reference guide. I'm holding alt to zoom in on that. And then on the right hand side, you also have your Rise of Red Skull campaign. So to place the campaign, you just left click the place button and everything you need to play the campaign is located here, including a campaign log that can be edited. So you can type in anything you want. Cool. So 
ahead and put this away for now. These objects on the top right, you want to leave these alone. If you mess with these in any way, it can break the automated builder. Yes, this mod has automation and scripting, and it depends on those things being exactly where they are. So try not to mess with those if possible. All right, looking at the bottom table, the player area, you have your player mats. This table is designed for solo or multiplayer play. You can also play solo, but play multiple heroes at once if your heart so desired. And you have your encounter set up, so we'll look at that. Uh, your encounter is going to include a villain health counter, the villain cards themselves, main scheme, main scheme counter, left click to raise the number, right click to lower the number, your acceleration tokens, threat tokens, encounter deck, encounter discard pile, and villain status tokens, which are going to remain deactivated unless you activate them by changing the state. You have a dark dimension. This is essentially like a recycle bin for chucking uh, trash at Dormammu. Once you throw something in here, I will note that you can't get it back. So don't throw something in here unless you are okay with getting rid of it. Okay? Cool. Worst case scenario, you could always hit rewind time to get something back if you really wanted to get it back. Cool. All right, so you got your play mats for each player. These are state changing as well. When I say state changing, that means there's multiple forms that you can choose or multiple states you can choose between. Maybe you didn't want to play as Ant-Man and you wanted to play as Iron Man. Okay? To change the state, just like this note card says, you could hover over the item and actually change. You can click which one you want. So in this case, we're going to change to Iron Man, which we've done here. These are the standard play mats. Let's go ahead and switch to Ant-Man. You can also use a magnetic play mat using these magnetic swappers. So we're located at player two. Just think of it as player one, two, three, and four, from left to right. And to do that, we just click magnetic, and it loads a zoned magnetic play mat. For those that like their cards to be um, have a magnetic snap, and for zones that kind of tell you where to place things. This is designed as well for your hero counter to be on the right side, your deck and discard pile to be on the right side as well. If you don't want them to be there, that's fine. You can use a standard play mat. I mean, you have options, right? Uh, you have your tokens for different, whether it be a status or damage. These are state changing as well. So you can either right click and change the state or you can just hover with your keypad, another way to change the state Hover over an object and click two or three on your keypad, and it's going to change, right? So you can change through different states. Let's get rid of those for the time being. You have your first player token. Pass that when you're ready. And then you have dark dimensions located at the bottom right and bottom left as well. All right. Player reference cards, you can go ahead and use these if you're new to the game or if you just like to have these out for reference. Um, it'll actually explain the phase for you. And you can hit F to flip and see the villain phase as well. So I leave Rhino here for default. You may not want to play Rhino. You may want to play something else. In fact, I almost always recommend that you do this anyway, is you delete this encounter. Um, so you can set up an encounter that you want as you want it. Okay. Never leave the encounter up here when you're building a new one. So let's go ahead and do that first. Let's build an encounter. So we're going to left click and highlight an area to highlight all these things. Everything else is locked. You don't have to worry about getting rid of those. Left click, highlight, and hit delete on our keyboard. It clears the play area. We're going to use the Marvel Champions Builder. Now this is where the cool automation comes in. We're going to left click to build your hero deck and choose an encounter. So. We can choose to build the hero first or an encounter. Let's build an encounter first. Uh, you can either make it random or you could choose. So we'll choose. Let's keep it simple. I don't know. Let's let's do uh, Green Goblin. So we'll drag down a Green Goblin mutagen formula. And for our modular encounter, we're going to go with Goblin Gimmicks and include Expert Set. 
so the expert cards are included. Build your encounter deck. Boom, it's that easy. Love that. So remember, we clicked build uh, the expert. Just because we built expert, what that does is it includes expert encounter cards. It doesn't automatically set up the expert villain with the expert counter. There's just a couple quick steps we need. So remember, expert only includes two and three, in this case for Green Goblin. Green Goblin at stage two is 18 points, so we'll left click to raise the points to 18. And you've got your main scheme here. Starts with 1A, so you can read the setup and go ahead and set that up. But if we wanted to grab the card and flip it using F, we could flip it and see, oh, hey, this starts with two threat per player and we're playing solo so left click to raise to two or you could use these tokens as well whichever you prefer i like to use them for side schemes personally all right so you've got that oh with side schemes mentioned you do have this is a magnetic play area so as you bring side schemes out you can see the shadow it'll snap in place that way it keeps things organized for you guys. So you've got that. And let's say this was an attachment. You could leave the attachment here. Let's say this was, um, you're playing Ultron and you have that drone card for your environment or another environment card, maybe for Absorbing Man. There is a magnetic placemat or play uh, area, magnetic snap for encounters as well. Okay, this bag has everything you need for the scenario inside of it, just in case you accidentally toss something. We'll move it out of the way for now to this top table. And we'll just move it over here. And this is our discard pile, remember, so flip, and it'll automatically rotate and discard for you. Cool. So let's look at building a hero. Very similar. Click Hero Builder. We just need our deck ID and we need to know whether it's private or public. So this uses Marvel CDB. If you don't already use Marvel CDB, I highly recommend it. We're gonna pull it up here, marvelcdb.com. It's free to make an account. And we're gonna go ahead and use a public deck, not one that we've created, but somebody else has made. And let's use Ant-Man Justice Bends but Never Breaks. This is made by Mag from Hall of Heroes. Not gonna lie, this deck is a beast. It's so good. Uh, so he's already written up a description on how to use it and the are, these are all the cards that are located in the deck. You could build this manually or we just need to know this number up here, right? So in the URL we need to know 5067. So in deck ID we write 5067 and it doesn't matter if it's private or public you have to click this button at least once to tell it what it is right so it's not private so it's public and now we can switch through this is a public deck we're going to go ahead and click build your hero deck and it's going to build hero and there you go you have everything you need for that hero including the nemesis set in the bag so we're going to keep it in the bag for now and set it out of sight and out of mind hoping that Shadows of the Past does not bring out that nemesis for us. Uh, the obligation has been sized, the same as the encounter deck, so you can drop it in there, hit R to randomize and shuffle. You have your hero deck, which has all those cards we just looked at on Marvel CDB. We're gonna place that here. And I like to place my hero here. And we need a counter for our hero, so you can either drag this down to its spot. I like to excuse me, right click, clone, and place it on the mat, just like that. So same thing, left click to raise the number, right click to drop it. We can change state again on this card uh, to Ant-Man from giant, excuse me, from Ant-Man to giant man by hitting two, or we could right click and go here. And you can flip to Scott Lang as well. Yeah. Uh, basic functions of Tabletop Simulator, but just to show you guys. So if you have a hand size of six, which we do here for Scott Lang, 
hover over the deck, hit six, and it's going to load your hand for you. And then when you're ready to discard something, let's say you really don't want Giant Stomp because for whatever reason, if you hold it over the discard pile, it's going to rotate it there for you automatically. If you're using the magnetic playmat. If you're not using magnetic, obviously you'll have to hit E or Q to exhaust or rotate as you'd like. So yeah, we can close that menu and now we can dive in to play a game pretty much how it works. The only thing I think we skipped was Rise of Red Skull, so let's look at that real quick. You place that here, we showed that you could edit your campaign log and you can right click and save the log as an object. So you could actually load that object in later if you wanted to when playing a game. As your rule book has some notes for how to use it. And the only thing that I think you really need to know is there are scenarios that require two modular encounters. Um, let's delete this. Right now, the encounter builder only allows one modular encounter per scenario, right? Well, so let's say you're playing and it requires two different modular sets. What you could do is you could do an encounter builder. You could choose, I don't know, let's say crossbones. And you could choose one of them. Maybe you wanted to choose Hydra Patrol, right? And you could build. But you also need Weapon Master. So you have your modulars down here. Weapon Master. Just drag the cards out of Weapon Master, flip them over. Left click and hold to drop it there. And R to randomize and you're good to go. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Look, guys, um, it's pretty simple, and your support is so greatly appreciated. So any questions you guys have, um, please, I, I look at my comments in the mod itself on Steam more often than I would YouTube. This is strictly just an overview of the table, but if you'd like to drop a comment there, feel free. Uh, any questions you guys might have but again your support's greatly appreciated and um, i thank you guys for it so i hope this helped and i'll talk to you guys later